there are a ton of big time players who entered the 2024 transfer portal, and a lot of big time schools got big time players at positions of need. Texas is trying to reload for a second straight playoff appearance, and after losing A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, and Jatavian Sanders, the Longhorns desperately needed a wide receiver or a big time playmaker to make up for them. While they won't be able to fill that void by those three big time names, Matthew Golden could be a legit superstar in the SEC next year, become a first round pick, and could be one of the best receivers the Longhorns have seen in a long time. Today I'm going to introduce you to who that is. He's one of the highest players to ever sign with Houston out of high school, was wanted by nearly every program in the country, and will probably pretty much be able to do everything for Texas in 2024. Alright, maybe I'm hyping him up too much, but in today's video we're going to talk about who Matthew Golden is. We're going to go through his story, his time at Houston, and why he can be such a big deal for the Longhorns. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the rise of Matthew Golden. In order to understand how Golden got to this point, we first need to go back in time. After being named the head coach of Klein Kane High School, him and the coaching staff were wondering what kind of players would have an impact on their program and how the heck they were going to build it from nothing. Well, their coach said, quote, We have some guys in middle school who are going to be special. The coach responded with, Middle school? Come on, man. Well, it turns out he was right. He continued to mention the name Matthew Golden over and over and just how unguardable this guy was. He had an insane work ethic and was a leader and had great physical skills. Matthew Golden loved football from a young age and obviously grew up in the fertile football grounds of Texas. As he got into high school, he was a star early on and said, quote, I learned what it was like to be a leader when I was a freshman as I watched the seniors. Leadership is pretty big here at Kane. Pretty quickly, Matthew Golden would explode and alongside future college quarterback Carson Roper and future Texas running back Jaden Blue, the Klein Kane program was in good hands despite it being pretty much brand new. Golden would end up setting the school record in his very first varsity game as he caught four touchdowns. He pretty much dominated all the time and his coach said, quote, he was like having a grown man out there at times. The thing about Matthew is that anytime he touches the ball, something is going to happen. It was hard to stay a coach sometimes because you're kind of like, I have to sit back and enjoy this. Matthew was the kind of player who always rose to the occasion and he always naturally progressed to the next step. He eventually became a four-star recruit and was one of my schools all over the country, gaining nearly 20 quick offers. Eventually, he decided to commit to TCU, and after having 1,300 all-purpose yards, he knew TCU was the place for him the moment he walked into the stadium. He said, quote, It felt like home when I was on my official visit, and I looked at the offense and I felt like it fit my playing style. Golden would study players such as Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, and Devontae Adams, and he would eventually try to model his game after them. By the time he was a junior, he was a household name in the state of Texas and won an even bigger senior year. He said he was going for 2,000 yards and 17 touchdowns, and people would see all the work that he had put in. While Golden was balling out on the field, everything was also looking good for TCU, but then Gary Patterson was fired. He would decide to open things back up and find a new school, and he had 20 offers before, so it wasn't going to be too challenging to find a good fit for him. Golden had an incredible year, as he caught 63 passes for 1,200 yards and 9 touchdowns. He also picked up a few more big time offers, such as Texas and the notable Jackson State. But as we all know, he decided to sign with Houston. He became one of the highest players to ever sign at the University of Houston, and this was a huge get for Dana Holgerson. Wait, what? Yeah. He decided to sign with an American school out of high school instead of a traditional power, and he was just a different guy. It's like his impact on his young high school. Take the last game of his high school career. He ended up losing 56 to 53 to Spring High School, and in that game, he almost willed them to a win. He caught two touchdown passes, ran for another, and even completed a pass on a trick play. Not only was he great as a receiver, but he also was super quick. He ran the 100 meter dash in 10.93 seconds and had a 21 foot 9 inch long jump. This made him a special athlete for Houston, and when you combine that with extreme talent and an extreme work ethic, Matthew Golden was quickly going to ascend to the top of college football, and it wasn't going to be a surprise to anybody. He played a big part in turning a high school program that didn't exist in 2017 into a regular playoff team. He also rewrote the record book. Matthew would finish his career with 167 catches for 3,342 yards and 32 touchdowns. He also had four more scores on the ground. He had NFL potential down the road, and many were pumped to see what he could do right away. According to 24-7 Sports, Golden was a four-star recruit, the number 25 receiver, and the 150th best player in the class of 2022. So, how would he end up doing at Houston? Well, just like everybody thought, Golden got a lot of praise to begin the season. Dana Holgerson is not the kind of coach to give out early praise, so when he was gushing over how good Matthew Golden can be as a freshman, it was significant. He said, quote, He's a different special kind of young man. He's very mature, very hardworking, and he doesn't say anything and he can go get it. 
pretty much right away Golden was going to be a starting receiver there, and at 19 years old, he was going to be paired alongside Tank Dell. Luckily, he wouldn't be asked to do too much, as obviously they had Tank Dell at receiver, and they also had a superstar quarterback in Clayton Toon. As a freshman in 2022, Golden would catch 38 passes for 584 yards and 7 touchdowns. He's one of the best freshman receivers in all of college football, and with Dell heading off to the NFL, it looked like the sky was going to be the limit for him in 2023. Except, honestly, that got to his head a little bit. 2023 didn't begin as planned, as he dropped 6 of his 13 catches through his first 3 games. That was completely jarring. How did he take such a big step back? Well, the answer was simple. Honestly, he had too high of expectations, and he just had to settle down. After that week 3 game against TCU, he didn't drop another pass the rest of the season. While Houston would struggle in their first year in the Big 12, Golden would end up finishing strong. He finished with 38 catches for 404 yards and 6 touchdowns. Obviously, those numbers were a little bit down from the year prior, but you have to remember they had a new quarterback, and the competition was going to be a little bit better now. He also only got to play in 9 games due to injury. Houston ended up finishing with a 4-8 record, and they went 2-7 in the Big 12. This led to the firing of head coach Dana Holgerson, and it led to Matthew Golden wanting to examine new options. In total in his career at Houston, he had 76 catches for 988 yards and 13 touchdowns. He also returned 14 kickoffs for 400 yards and two more touchdowns there. Where was he going to go? Well, he looked to the flagship school. The Texas Longhorns had been pursuing both Antoine Wells and Deion Burks, but with Burks wanting to go to Oklahoma and Wells wanting to go to Ole Miss, their first commitment in the receiver department would end up coming from Golden. This was a huge get for him, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star transfer, the number nine receiver, and the 48th best player available in the portal. He was definitely not new to the Longhorn staff, as when Houston played them last year, he had a huge game. Golden helped bring them back from a 21-0 deficit, and he finished with seven catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns. Unfortunately for Texas, they lose a lot of talent, as as I said earlier in the video, they lose their star tight end Jatavian Sanders, and their two big receivers A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. Golden will be expected to be the guy right away, but there are still plenty of other talented guys in the receiver room, including Jonte Cook, DeAndre Moore, and Ryan Niblett. That's not even talking about some of their freshmen like Ryan Wingo, but there was a lot of losses for Texas. They lost their top two true receivers in Worthy and Mitchell, and both Isaiah Nayor and Casey Kane also enter the portal. Luckily, they got Golden, and right away, he's going to be the number one target for their quarterback, Quinn Ewers. Scout said, quote, The 6-foot, 190-pound Golden is a burner with top-notch speed and lightning-quick agility and acceleration. He was a track star in high school, and you can also get him the ball behind the line of scrimmage or in short developing route concepts to let him make plays in space after the catch. Golden's one of those gadget players that'll pretty much be able to do everything, and I truly think he'll be the focal point of this year's offense. It's crazy to think the vast number of ways that Sarkeesian and the Longhorn can make this offense fun, as Jonte Cook II is extremely electric and is just like him, and both of those guys will be dangerously difficult to stop. As dynamic of an athlete as Golden is, there still are a few parts of his game that are somewhat worrisome. He can improve his balance a little bit, and some of his route running, but for the most part, He's going to be a star, I think he'll get the most targets on this year's team, and will help Texas navigate year one in the SEC. Quinn Ewers is definitely hoping that Golden steps up, as he's looking to make the college football playoff again and elevate his play into the top 10 of the 2025 NFL Draft. If Texas is as good as advertised, then Matthew Golden's going to be extremely important and will be a huge household name by this time next year. He definitely has potential to be a first or second round draft pick in my opinion, and the sky seemingly is the limit for this guy. But what do you guys think? If you're a Texas fan, what do you think of this year's receiver room? What do you think of Matthew Golden? And who's another transfer I should take a look at next? There are so many transfers and so many players I'd like to cover, so be sure to let me know one down below that I could cover in my next video. Before you go, don't forget to also leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.